Yes, I made it. Artists, you gotta start working for free. Why? Because working for free is actually the quickest way to start making money from doing art. Oh yeah. Didn't, yeah, you didn't see that one coming, did you? Okay, what am I actually talking about here? How is what I said even possible? How many licks does it take to get to the Tootsie Roll Center of the Tootsie Pop? All right, take it easy. First off, I'm Carney. It's nice to meet you. I've done a lot of creative work in a lot of different fields for a lot of different clients. I will be honest that I don't make a full-time living from artistic work, but I do make a much larger percent of it doing it since I started working for free. But let me make a very clear distinction of what I mean when I say work for free. Note this in your head in like bold, all caps, permanent marker text. I am not telling you to let businesses exploit you and say they'll pay you an exposure or give you the promise of something in the future. Those are scams. You deserve better than that. I am not saying you should do those. What I am talking about is this. When you are willing to invest some time doing some work pro bono for people that you know, you get three things out of it. Number one is cool. Number two is better. But number three is the really important one. Number one is money. That's right, baby. Makes the world go round. But Carney, how am I supposed to make money if I'm not charging for my artistry. I'm so confused and I need the wisdom of a very handsome person that I don't know personally on YouTube to soothe my cluttered mind. Hey, don't worry, sport. I got you. Here's one example from my life to explain how it's actually possible to make money if you're not charging for your services. Last October, a friend of mine sent me an Instagram story from this pop punk artist on an indie label saying that he needed a bass player, a guitar player, and a drummer for this gig he was doing in San Diego. I was going through a lot and my friend was advising me to go, in his words, full yes man, and just send in an audition. So I did. He picked me to play bass and then he picked these two guys I had never met, Max and Diego to play guitar and drums respectively. That gig was a complete nightmare. A complete, the worst gig I have ever played in my life. And I've played a lot. It's a very long story. Maybe I'll tell that another day. But while I was there, me and Max got to talking about how he's always playing in cover bands, how I used to play in cover bands, how I'd be open to playing in cover bands again. After that night, Max is now calling me to play paying cover gigs with his band. Me, him and Diego really like playing with each other. So we decided, hey, why don't we start our own cover band? Depending on the month, I make between a few hundred to over a thousand dollars playing with these guys. And it never would have happened if I hadn't agreed to play one gig for free. I have other examples of this too. I did a spec mix for a song that my friend produced. They didn't pick it, but now it's on my portfolio. I volunteered to help out my buddy Christian with his post-production business, doing some editing. I did a few days for free. And then not only did I start getting paid, but I also met my friend, Rachel. Rachel is a fantastic producer. And she has now openly told me that she would love to help me make some projects in the future. And the beautiful thing about this is that it goes both ways. If Rachel has a project that she's really passionate about. I would love to help her out with that too. This leads me to number two, community. One thing I've always heard people say about the value of film school is that they say it's not really the education you get, but the friends you make when you're there because those friends are the ones who will call you to work some gig when you haven't gotten anything in a while, but they've had some success. I believe this mentality can apply to every creative space. I got a hypothetical for you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to do it, but I just, I, hear me out. If you have a friend that works at a place that does art classes and they're really, really strapped and they're like, hey, we just need someone to come sub a few classes for free. If you offer to do that, the people at that business will not forget you. And at the end of the day, what did you give up? An hour? Maybe two? Where you helped people? You don't have to look at this as charity work, but if you want to, go ahead. People should do more charity work. If you were forced to do charity work and you were given the option to like make your art as the means of doing that charity work, you'd be pretty stoked about that. Why not just do it voluntarily? Do one for the culture, one for the kids. We live in a pretty isolated society right now in so far as everyone is kind of becoming more conditioned to just be antisocial. A few weeks ago, my friend Christiana shared a really good article about how it used to be really commonplace to kind of just like ask your friends and neighbors for help with things in a way that it just isn't anymore. Guys, I am so sorry. There's a, I have another one. I have another hypothetical. I just, we have to do it. I'm sorry. Imagine you start making a meal and midway through you realize, ah, oh, I forgot to get a lemon. Wouldn't it be great 
to just go to the apartment next door and ask if they have one you could borrow. You can't do that anymore. If somebody walked up to your door and said, hey, can I borrow a lemon? You would probably think they were trying to kill you. I am only half joking when I say that. There is so much like true crime content in the world. Like people don't trust anybody anymore. Community is scarce in society, but I especially can feel that scarcity when it comes to art communities. I live in LA. I have met some people who are great, and I have also met some people who anytime you bring up working on a project with them, they just look at it as an opportunity to talk about their rate and act like they're this important person who's so much more professional than anybody else you could get, and they're not. They're on the same level as all of us, and they end up tanking projects because you just can't find anybody to do any of the jobs. And those people miss out on some great projects, which leads me to number Three. The love of the game. When did we stop doing things for the love of the game? When we all started making art, it was because we just liked art. I started playing guitar when I was 10 because I just liked music. And somewhere along the way, I and so many other people just lost that, especially if you try to make it your job. And that's not to say that nobody should make being creative their job. I mean, a lot of people do it successfully. But there is such a problem with losing the passion for making stuff. And I think that doing a project just to do it could be the antidote to that problem. And the reason I believe this is Twofold. Number one, working on a project just for the fun of it might be the thing that gets you inspired to make your next project. And number two, what if that project pops off? Seriously, you never know if that cheap DIY thing your friend says he's shooting this weekend could be the one thing this year in your friend group that suddenly just goes viral on YouTube or TikTok or something. Here's a recent example of this that I found on YouTube. I got recommended a short film called Knox by this guy named Jaden Dante Gear. I had never heard of this guy before, I hadn't listened to his music, but here he was being recommended to little old me. So I watched the short film, and I say this with love and as a compliment, it does not look professional. It looks like a bunch of college kids got together for a one or two day shoot and just were really excited to make something. I think that's awesome, and apparently other people did too because that short film now has 160,000 views. I have seen so many projects that could have been so cool die because people get so hung up on the money and the logistics that it just never gets off the ground. There is some sage wisdom that I happened upon as a child that has stuck with me to this day. It is found in one of the sacred texts of the gospel of borderline millennial Gen Z babies. The Tony Hawk underground plotline. In this game, your character has gone from the bottom of the ladder to the top and right back down to the bottom. And he starts to wonder why he started skating in the first place. He goes back to his hometown and meets a mentor. He tells him about his troubles and the mentor says this. Skating is whatever you make it. It didn't change. You're the one that changed. Now go skate. You'll remember why you started in the first place. I implore you. Musicians, go jam with that friend of yours from work that you keep blowing off. Filmmakers, go work on that short film that your friend wrote the really funny script for even though it doesn't pay anything. Actors, go be in your friend's sketches that aren't getting any views. If you are not being compensated for making art in general, that does not mean that you should stop making art. You should keep making art. It will remind you why you started in the first place. I'm Carney, thanks for watching. Fellas, great to see ya. And uh, say something nice to the ladies on the way out.